Welcome everybody. In today's uh, video, we are going to talk about and I'm going to demonstrate hands-on AWS CLI and how to install the command line interface tool using Windows, Windows 10. So, um, and I'm, in fact, a couple of ways I'm gonna demonstrate this hands-on step-by-step so you can actually learn and see for yourself how it's done. Typically we use the AWS you know, user interface, for example, when you log on to the AWS Management Console, you, um, you know, you can do almost any task. But as you progress further, um, even if you don't, even if you don't, it's always nice to learn hands-on commands, right? So I'm going to demonstrate step by step. So go through the entire video. And then if you have any questions, of course, post in the comment area. I'll be happy to answer. Uh, once you do this, just kind of go along with the lecture. Do it yourself. Make sure you have a free AWS free tier account already. If not, you can just check out my other videos on how to open up an AWS free tier account. All right, so let's dive right in into how to install AWS CLI on Windows. Welcome back. Super excited moving forward. In this lesson, I'm going to demonstrate the use of AWS command line interface tool. So with the AWS CLI, you can essentially run scripts using a command line. All you have to do is let me jump, jump right in and navigate to this tab where it says amazon.com forward slash CLI. So you just need to navigate to this particular page and here you'll notice that the Amazon command line interface CLI is a unified tool that manages and you can manage your AWS services with this tool. The CLI is a unified tool to manage all of your AWS services. So with this particular tool that you can download and configure, you're able to control multiple AWS services right from the command line and automate them through scripts. So I'm gonna demonstrate here how to download and then maybe you'll run some commands just so that you understand how powerful the command line interface can be. Although you could accomplish the same with using the GUI interface, but it's always helpful to understand and know the command lines as well. So from this page, all you have to do is just navigate to the right side of the screen. You can, if you're running Windows, you can download the 64-bit or 32-bit version. If you're running Mac and Linux, you can use the pip install AWS CLI command to install. Please note that this requires Python 2.6.5 or higher version, and then you have to install the pip as well. So I'm going to go ahead and download and run the 64-bit Windows. So this will open up the Windows Explorer. It will save the MSF file. I'm going to go ahead and click Save. And once the file is saved, it's about almost 20 megs file, so it's not going to take that long. Once the file is downloaded, we are going to go ahead and install. And while this is being downloaded, I'm just going to mention that the AWS CLI introduces a new set of simple file commands that we're going to take a look at, right? Proficient file transfers to and from Amazon S3 buckets. So we can get started and take a look at the CLI reference here. We can visit the GitHub project and also navigate to the community forum. And this is helpful, especially if you're running commands and you need some help in taking a look at some of the challenges that you would like to accomplish. If I scroll down, there's also AWS Shell, which is in developer preview at this point, which is a command line shell program that also provides convenience and several other features to help both new and advanced users of the AWS command line interface. So some of the additional capabilities of AWS Shell is fuzzy autocomplete on, dynamic inline documentation, execution of OS shell commands, and so forth. So this is also part of this. All right, and then of course, you can scroll down and take a look at the usage and various commands that you use with the AWS command line user guide. I will provide this as a downloadable resource so you'll have a list of all these commands that you can reference as you're progressing through this course. Great. So once this is downloaded, I'm gonna go ahead and run this. Simply click on this. This will open up a new window and we'll start the installation process. Let's go ahead and click on next, accept the license, click on next once again. And this is the location of this particular AWS CLI where this is going to be installed. 
program file to Amazon if you wish to change you can let's go ahead and click next and then click on install it just asks for the permission for the user account control click on yes and this is going to go ahead and install the interface for you great so let's go ahead and finish the setup for this great so next you would like to take a look at where the command line or the MSI installer actually installed all the files because we use the Windows 64 bit MSI. So I'm going to navigate Windows Explorer just so that you can see. And here's the path, right? So program files, Amazon, and then AWS CLI. And within this CLI folder, you will notice you have bin, resources, runtime, and so forth. So if I were to expand any one of these, for example, bin contains the AWS.cmd. And then the resources contain a bunch of images. And then runtime are all the Python files. Okay, because Python 3.6 is also installed, or the files are made available. Great. Let's minimize this. So once you have this, I'm going to go, go ahead and open up the command line, the Windows command line, so we can now execute the AWS commands right from our command prompt. So let's navigate to the command prompt here. Perfect. So once I have the command prompt open, I can now start to execute these commands. Now, of course, there's a whole list of reference commands that I will provide as a downloadable resource. But just so that you're aware, I'm going to demonstrate how to configure the AWS environment, how to connect to AWS, input our access ID keys, and so forth. But before we actually do all of that, let me bring up my handy notes here that I will also provide. You'll notice that, let me scroll up. To download the MSI file, which we did already. And now you can also run some of the commands here. For instance, I can type the AWS, check the version. So just type AWS space two dashes and version. And this is going to bring up the AWS CLI. And that's the installation we did with the MSI, right? Great. And of course, Python is also there. But to verify whether Python was there, I can also check the version of the Python. This is Python 3.6.7. Awesome. Next, I can run AWS configure if I need to connect to AWS. But before I actually do this, just the word on pip, by the way, you can install the pip install AWS CLI right from the command prompt as well. So if you do not download the MSI package, right, for Windows, let's say you're using Mac. Or Linux, you can simply type this command pip install AWS CLI. And if you can also use the curl command to install, it will get the pip and install pip for you. And then once pip is installed, you can then use the package manager to install the rest of the tools or Python for it. Great. So, for instance, let me just demonstrate this. So, if I were to use pip to install, and you can of course uninstall this as well, and then type this, this is also going to collect the AWS CLI, and it's going to install for you, right? So it's going to navigate to pythonoc.org, fetch all the packages, and start the installation process. Okay, so I just wanted to demonstrate both ways. Since the requirement is already satisfied, it's there. But in your case, if you're installing a fresh, it's going to actually go ahead and do the install for you. Great. Once this is installed, next, Let's go ahead and continue on with configuring our actual AWS environment. So I'm going to go ahead and do AWS configure, and this is going to go ahead and ask for my access key ID and then, of course, the secret ID and so forth. So let me go ahead and navigate to the management console and fetch those access ID for this user. So I'll navigate to the management console page, go under services. The I am under security, identity, and clients. Once I'm on that page, I'm going to, from the left side, I'll be navigated to the users, right? That's what I'm looking for. Go ahead and click on users. And I should have a couple of them. Perfect. So I'm going to pick, let's say, this, my name here, Syed, for security credentials. And then here are my uh, access keys that I've created a couple of views each one of them, any one of them, right? And this, of course, you like to keep it secret, right? Because you have the access key. 
ID and there's a secret key ID that was downloaded once you created the access key. Okay, so go ahead, fetch that, and then let's navigate back to our command prompt here. And I'm going to go ahead and enter first the access key ID. And then, of course, I need the secret key as well. So after I enter the secret key, just hit the enter key. The default region name is none. If you know the region name, you can type US East dash one, for instance, or you can leave it blank. The default output format, if you leave it none, that's fine. Otherwise, it's typically JSON. And then you have run the AWS configure command at this point in time. So let me go ahead and clear out the screen here so we can continue forward. Next, what you'd like to do is take a look at all of the instances that are part of the AWS. Since we're already connected to our account using the command prompt, so I'm going to go ahead and type the following command. Let's see if I have it here. There we go. So it's AWS and then EC2 describe dash regions and then output a table. If I run this command, this is going to list all of the that I have available within the AWS ecosystem. It takes a few seconds or so because it's trying to connect and then it will print out the output table for you. Perfect. So if I scroll up, notice this is all the endpoints that I have available and then the region names within the AWS ecosystem. Great. So let's scroll down, run another command here for you. Here we are going to create a new bucket, right? New S3 bucket within our AWS ecosystem. Straightforward. I'm just going to run this command AWS S3 MB make bucket. And then, of course, the name of the bucket after you provide the path. So, in this example, I'm using the name called new CD bucket. So, if I were to execute this, this is going to go ahead and create a new bucket within AWS. Let's verify this. Let's navigate to our management console here under services. I'm going to go ahead and go to S3. And this will list all of the buckets. And within this list, I should be able to see the recently created bucket. And if I scroll down, perfect. There we go. So it's the very last one on the bottom, right? It's called new CD bucket. And if I need to remove the bucket, just bring up the command line and then use the same command. Instead of make bucket, we are going to do RB, right? Remove bucket. So if I execute this, this is going to, in fact, remove this bucket behind within my console. So if I go to my console, just refresh, you will notice, perfect, now I have eight buckets instead of nine. So it's very powerful to use the command line or the command prompt, especially you're working with the Amazon ecosystem. You can, of course, use the GUI interface as well, but it's really your preference as DevOps engineers is sometimes easier when you're working with command line. If you've been around for a while, like myself, with well over 15, 20 years, you're pretty comfortable with the command prompt, right? But if you're a new user, then you may want to use the console itself and use the GUI interface. However, I would recommend that you do both. Okay, so you need to be pretty good at both of these. And as you progress, as you get more experience, I've provided you the command line reference. So just practice with all of these commands. As we move forward, we'll be using this as well. So I hope this helps. Practice with this. If you have any questions, post in the discussion area. We'll be glad to help. With this, let's move to the next lesson.